And ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gives me pleasure to welcome our final presentation uh, by Dr. Theodoridis from Athens, um, who's going to further our, our knowledge in the utilization of TADS uh, with therapy. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real honor to be here uh, at the closing part of this very enlightening session. My presentation today is going to be a continuation of the discussion opened by Dr. Vilmes and Dr. Greco regarding TADS and the complex treatment uh, of uh, cases with TADS and aligners. Class II malocclusions are a very common finding in our practices, and we are often uh, facing the dilemma, dilemma whether to extract when we have a full cusp, class II relationship, or to proceed with distalization, especially if the patient is requiring invisible treatment uh, with aligners. It's very tempting to start a full cusp correction with aligners. Uh, sometimes it may require 70 or even 80 or even 100 aligners for this type of correction. And this is the case that we start or I start to consider TADS to correct this discrepancy. We know that TADS have several advantages regarding the correction of a class two relationship. First of all, they work at a larger speed uh, of about um, they, they produce a more pronounced sagittal correction with a mean of 3.6 millimeters. They can provide a vertical correction at the same time. Their speed is larger than the aligner speed, and they produce less tipping, less side effects in the anterior teeth, and of course, they do not require the cooperation of the patient. So, going back to our full cusp class two correction, my personal protocol is that if I have to distalize more than 2.5 millimeters, then this is the time that I consider skeletal anchorage for this correction. Regarding the placement of TADS, we can place them buccally, we can place them palatally. Regarding the buccal placement, we run several risks. Uh, one of the most important ones is that we are uh, running the risk of placing the TAD on non-mobile mucosa, which may lead to micro tears, inflammation, micro jiggling, and eventually TAD failure. Whereas placing them on the palate, uh, usually, not usually, if not always, TADs are placed exclusively on non-mobile mucosa, which is keratinized, therefore we have absence of inflammation, and we have very high chances for TAD success. So going back to this case, uh, this is Alexandros, 25 years old, with a slight class two relationship on the right side and a very pronounced class two relationship on the left side. It's a full cusp class two with a cross bite at the same time and an open bite. Uh, we can see that there was some skeletal component to the open bite and third molars were present in three quadrants. So we decided to proceed with uh, TAD-assisted distalization for this patient. And we used uh, two mini implants that were placed in the anterior palate. Uh, we used the Benefit distalizer, uh, also called the Bene slider, with Panach tubes bonded on the lingual side of the molars. And the system was activated by 500 grams nitai coil springs. So the TADs uh, were placed, and of course, the third molars were extracted. Sorry, let me go back. Uh, you can see that on the left side, the, wire, the base wire was bent cranially of about 30 degrees to provide some intrusion simultaneously with distalization. And the activation intervals for this patient were every four weeks where the coils were fully compressed. In the first five months of treatment, we saw a very slow correction of the class two relationship, uh, mainly due to the pulling of the interceptal fibers. In 10 months, the spaces were evident, 11 months, and then at 12 months, the molar had moved to class one, and the patient was uh, initiated with aligner treatment, and the treatment of choice was Invisalign. Uh, we removed the Bene slider, and we replaced it with a TPA uh, arch that was connected uh, to the mini implants for stabilization. So this is the initial uh, situation at uh, the start of aligner treatment. And uh, during the clean check uh, designing, we decided that we needed some protraction on the left side. Therefore, we cut one branch of the TPA to allow the protraction to occur. This is the predicted result at stage 38. So this is the start of Invisalign. This is the screenshot of the initial situation. And this is the predicted clean check outcome. 
And this is the real uh, situation when uh, all the aligners of the first uh, group uh, finished. You can see that we have lost some anchorage on the left side, which was due to, to the fact that the patient had an accident. He had to have an MRI scan, or several of them, so we had to remove the TPA. So in order to correct uh, the res uh, residual class 2, we proceeded with a mid-course correction. And the patient was very reluctant to wear class 2 elastics. Therefore, we modified the Bennett slider, we fixed the, the, left, the right side, and we activated with a coil uh, the left side. And we had to treatment plan this accordingly because let me tell you that at the time it was not possible to send an impression to align with anything bonded on the teeth. So uh, we proceeded with a modification. This is, this is the side where we needed the distalization. So we proceeded with this modification. We extracted teeth at 2.6 and 2.7 on the clean check. So we would have the aligners distalized separately than the TAD system. And this would be the predicted outcome. You can see here the video of the movements. So, because the distalization caused by the TAD system, the speed is different than the distalization speed of the aligners, there was some space uh, that was developed and it was expected. So, we proceed to, the final, to another refinement to correct uh, this. And this is actually, uh, there was actually another refinement after this, but we have reached a point where the patient has a class one relationship at the moment, so it shouldn't be uh, a, an easy, a difficult task to correct the posterior open bite, which was observed uh, as in many aligner cases. Let me tell you that at the time uh, that we started, there was no ClinCheck Pro available. At this phase, there was a ClinCheck Pro, so I took uh, the initiative and initiated the final refinement to close the posterior open bite, uh, which is not a problem, I believe. Uh, it's really difficult in this case to let the teeth settle because the patient was, had a constricted arch, he was in cross bite, so anything would lead to a relapse. So most importantly, we can see in the final panoramic x-ray that the distalization was achieved without any tipping, which I think is great. <clears throat> you can see the closing of the open bite. Uh, the distalization <clears throat> was about 3.4 uh, millimeters, and there was some intrusion as well, which helped uh, to the correction of the open bite. This is the comparison. And in general, what are the improvements that we can have with this uh, TAD aligner combination or this hybrid system, as Dr. Carriere mentioned yesterday, which I think is a very good term for this combination. Uh, this is another case. You can see that we have the upper second molars that are being protracted with the TAD system, and the TAD anchor teeth are completely out of the, the aligner, again, because at the time it was not really possible to set an impression with, with bonded uh, things on the teeth. So ideally, we would want the aligners to accommodate the palatal TAD system included in the initial impression or, or scan. So if we achieve that, there would be no need to trim the aligner. This is another case you can see in the middle uh, uh, photo of the cast. The blue part is where we have to trim the aligner, and we have to do this to every aligner. So it would be a much easier uh, scenario not having to do this and to have everything included in the aligners. And of course, another important task that we have to work on is how to pace the distalization of the TADs with the distalization of the aligners so we can avoid fitting issues. So what are the conclusions? TADs can transform complex cases to simple ones that would not have been treated with aligners alone. A large number of patients can be addressed who would have otherwise been rejected for aligner treatment, and we have a lot of these patients asking for treatment, but they don't want visible appliances. TADs can be used before, during, or after aligner therapy, and palatal TADs show smaller failure rates, they're away of the path of tooth movement, and they're more aesthetic because they're completely invisible. So, just as we have two particles, in the space and they interact with each other and they create gravitational waves, which is very popular these days. This is the way that TADs can have a synergy with the aligners, hopefully not leading us into a black hole, 
but changing the future of invisible orthodontics and really changing the way we treatment plan our cases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.